And now, your Billy Wood Honda forecast first. Well, today's high and low, sitting right above or actually above average for our Almanac, but 85 looking closer and closer. Look like it's being hit as we get into the start of next week. And look, speaking about temperatures, we are going to get a little bit low tonight. It's going to be in the low 40s, but as we get further in tomorrow, they're going to rebound really quickly back up into the mid to high 70s across the Arklamist. And they're making for a very pleasant day. That's your forecast for us. NBC 10 News at 10 starts now. Live from the NBC 10 Broadcast Center, this is your Arklamis News Source. Voted Best Newscast and Best Weather by the Louisiana Association of Broadcasters. This is NBC 10 News, live at 10. Hello and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Maj Queer. Our top story at 10 today marks two years since Russia's full-scale invasion in Ukraine. The conflict has left tens of thousands dead, injured or missing, and Ukrainian forces are facing increasingly dire ammunition shortages as new military aid remains stalled in Congress. NBC's Richard Engel reports in Kyiv, Ukraine. This is, of course, the two-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine when Russian forces tried to take this city, the capital, Kyiv, but were ultimately unsuccessful. Now, most of the fighting is along the front lines in the south and in the east, but this is a very difficult moment for Ukraine. The supplies of Western ammunition are running low. U.S. support is looking shaky. And Russia is appearing confident, taking its first significant territory in nearly a year out in the Far East. But today, President Zelensky, he went to a spot just outside of Kyiv where the Russians launched their initial assault. It was an air assault just outside of, uh, of the Ukrainian capital. He went there and he said, two years ago, Russian forces tried to take this country from this very spot. But this time, he was accompanied by the leaders of Italy, Canada, the European Union, and he said instead of being under attack in that spot, now they are surrounded by friends. So Ukraine is trying to put an optimistic spin on this day, and I can say despite all of the losses, despite all of the destruction in this country, Ukrainians are exhausted, but they are certainly not defeated. They are certainly not demo uh, demoralized. They know why they are fighting. They know the costs of losing this war. Vladimir Putin says and continues to say that Ukraine is not a country, it is a, a long lost part of Russia and that he's on a historic mission to reunite it under Russia's control, under his control. And so far that has not been successful. And as long as uh, Ukrainians say they can get Western support, they can get more weapons coming, they believe that victory is still possible. Louisiana law enforcement officers could soon receive more protection, not from firearms, but from lawsuits. It's a bill getting a lot of debate right now in the special crime session. Jordan Lippincott tells us more. In my opinion, this is probably one of the worst, if not the worst bill of this session. State Representative Edmund Jordan reacting to a bill that would give police officers, deputies, and other peace officers increased immunity from civil liability while working. The bill's author, State Rep Tony Bacala, says officers could be held liable if they participated in criminal, fraudulent, or intentional misconduct. This bill shields officers and departments from frivolous BS civil actions. We checked in with our legal analyst, attorney Cliff Cardone. He says the bill allows an officer to be protected from lawsuits, even if they acted negligently. If a police officer arrests an individual, beats up the individual, and that individual is convicted of that underlying charge for which he is arrested, then that police officer would be free from any civil liability. And that's why I tell you that the people who killed Ronald Green, they would get away with it under this statute. Those supporting the bill say the increased immunity gives officers peace of mind and could contribute to better retention. So this legislation in no way stands up for bad law enforcement officers. It gives another ounce of protection for the good law enforcement officers. 
Well, today in Monroe, the 40th annual Black History Parade kicked off around 10 a.m. Hosted by the Renaissance Movement Committee, the parade honors the contributions, accomplishments, and the rich culture within the black community. Local organizations, floats, bands, and cultural displays were showcased. The parade's theme this year was Black Excellence, Past, Present, and Future. And health news researchers at the University of Minnesota have found a potential first step toward an HIV cure, although they admit it's still years away from being a viable option. Currently, those living with HIV can take medication to help suppress symptoms, but there is no cure. Ian Russell has more. At the U of M, some big work. Can you guys tell me what you're what, what you're working on today? Is being done in something small. It's, in, it's within reach, yes. Meet Dr. Joshua Ryan. Yeah. Assistant professor of medicine focusing on infectious diseases and HIV. For decades, those with HIV have been able to treat it with medication, but we still don't have a cure for HIV. That could be changing. It's really within reach. Um, for the, for the first time in a long time. Their work here is not a cure, but it's a step in the right direction. They use cells your body already makes, called natural killer or NK cells, along with those same cells from a close relative, and combine them with a drug that increases those cells' activity. Their research found that when combined, the cells caused a decreased amount of the HIV virus in the body. I would say that it's, that it's a major development. Those NK cells are white blood cells that have been studied for years in cancer patients. In the HIV setting, we're hoping that we can activate these NK cells to now target the reservoir, the residual infected cells in patients living with HIV. Dr. Jeff Miller, director of the Masana Cancer Center, also studies these NK cells. And if there was an easy way to do this with very little risk, this could change some of the paradigms for future therapy. A potential game changer for HIV patients, while both doctors admit the work happening here is just the first step. These all take, um, you know, separate research questions, and um, but I, you know I think we're in a, a great time and a, and a great place to um, to really achieve this. Coming up on NBC 10 News at 10, we'll take a look at a special program for North Carolina inmates. Stay with us. News sponsored by Banner Ford of Monroe. NBC 10 News at 10 continues. The Forsyth County Correctional Center in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, allows inmates to train dogs as a part of the new Leash on Life program. Local organizations have put on this program for years, but now they are working with their first special needs dog. Reporter Kelly Kendall has the details. Like most dogs, Simone loves to play outside and hang out with her canine pals. But there's something different about her. She's deaf. Simone is a one to two year old mix who first arrived at a shelter. She was put in the new Leash on Life program four weeks ago. And according to her trainer, Terry Smith, she's doing great. We're halfway in and she already has sit down, stay, place, come, walks good on the leash, does a few tricks. She's overcome her lack of hearing and learned all of these skills at the Forsyth County Correctional Center, which puts on the new Leash on Life program. For trainers like Terry, man's best friend has been life-changing. I've trained quite a few and uh, you always get bond with them and get really attached, but the bottom line is I, I don't have a home right now. I mean, I can give her all the love I can, but I don't have a home, so she, uh, she's better off to go to a good home. The dogs live here with the men for 10 weeks. They have their own doggy dorm right behind us. And they are taught obedience, advanced obedience, um, house training, crate training. Shuki Martin coordinates the program at the Correctional Center. She says the program is not just good for the dogs, but good for their trainers as well. Not only do they develop a skill, um, it just gives them a reason to keep pushing on. For Smith, that's true. He says he loves training dogs through the program and hopes Simone can find a loving home despite her disability. She, she's a good dog and she just deserves a, a good loving home. And I assure you with everything in me that uh, you love this dog and she'll pay you back that love in measurable amounts. But there's next meteorologist Sammy Petraco is here. He'll have your full forecast when NBC 10 News at 10 continues. Live.
Dave Storm Tracker Doppler Radar, sponsored by Homeland Bank. And now, exclusive Storm Tracker Doppler weather with meteorologist Sammy Petraco. Well, taking a look at our live Storm Tracker Doppler again. Nothing too much happening across the Arkhamist, except for some temperatures. They're actually going to, temperatures are going to slowly, slowly dropping into the mid 40s across the Arkhamist. Those are going to continue to drop as we get further into the night. Dew point temperatures rising a little bit as we got further into the night, just due to the fact that we're getting some changes in the wind, getting some more moisture pumped into the atmosphere, pumped in the atmosphere, but that's not really affecting us right now. Satrad looking very clear, clear clear skies across the Arkhamist and that's going to continue and that's just due to the fact that we have a high pressure off to the east now it was in the north but now it's off in the east creating a little bit of a more more wind side of the south as we get it going to keep moving southeast and that's going to create a wind from not the east but now from the south creating a little bit more moisture into the atmosphere but let's take a look at what that moisture might do as we get further into the week Saturday Sunday you're going to see ridging going to continue. It's going to continue into Monday, but if we look at this, we got a little bit of a trough coming in over in Seattle. It's going to come in through Denver and it's going to stay north of us, but it's going to create a little uh, cold frontal passage for Wednesday around midday, and that could create some scattered showers. It's going to create a more cold temperatures as we get into next week, but of course those are going to bump right back up. And speaking about temperatures, or not to be mad. Looking into Wednesday, looking into Thursday and Friday, it's going to continue. You might see some lingering showers in in the Arkhamist and for Thursday and Friday, and that's maybe continue as we get to Saturday. But Saturday temperatures look like they are going to rebound. And again, looking for temperatures, temperature outlook for the next six to ten days trending in the very warm direction. And with that, there is a little bit of tag for a limited fire danger for these temperatures as they continue to keep warming and that's if we don't get enough precipitation but looking at our outlook for the six to ten day of precipitation looks like the precip precipitation looks like it's going to make its way back into the Arkhamist back into the Arkhamist creating for maybe that fire danger limiting itself as we get into tonight tonight's low going into the low 40s across the Arkhamist maybe a little bit lower than that but today generally it's gonna be because of that clear skies a little bit of a cooler cooler night and that's going to continue into the morning but those are going to quickly rebound as we get into tomorrow winds north and then they start and then they go into east and then they come out of the south five to ten miles as we get earlier into the morning and then tomorrow the winds were going to still going to come out of the south but 10 to 20 mile per hour tomorrow's high sitting in the in the low in the high 70s and low 80s with a sunny warmer or warmer warmer and breezy day and warmer day with winds still out of the south today's forecast or sorry seven day forecast on this sunday monday you're going to see the continuing of the sun with daytime clouds as we get into tuesday a little bit windier cold front passes on wednesday with a little bit of those scattered showers coming in thursday you might see those lingering shower showers but the temperatures are going to drop. Friday, temperatures are going to start to rise up with some more, again, lingering showers, more clouds, and then those clouds might just start to dissipate as we get into Saturday with the temps rebounding. Asia, back to you. Thanks, Sammy. Coming up on NBC 10 News at 10, it was senior day for a couple colleges around town. Stay tuned after the break to see if a few seniors celebrated their last win at home. And now, your Wachita Valley Federal Credit Union Sports Desk. Welcome back into sports, everyone. Jerry Ryan here with Ayana Brana. We're here inside the Thomas Assembly Center. It's been a busy week in Ruston. First, we had the news of Ryan Ivey being announced as the new athletic director and vice president of Louisiana Tech Athletics. But also across the street, we had the Diamond Dolls, LA Tech Baseball, getting two wins in a row over Kent State this weekend. But last but not least, we also had the Lady Texters taking on New Mexico State. Now, last time, these two teams faced off against each other. It took overtime to decide a winner, and lo and behold, it took another overtime thriller to decide the winner of today's game. So I got to want to ask, what do we make of what we saw here today? So yes, the Lady Texters came out with the overtime win today. It was a very thrilling game in the first half. The Lady Texters weren't doing too good. Their shots weren't following through. New Mexico State was very physical with their ball game, very physical with attacking the paint. And but in the first in the second half in overtime, the Lady Texters really took back their dominance. New Mexico State was I think they really self-destructed. Um, they started fouling a lot and the Lady Texas really came out with the win and they never trailed in overtime and it was a good game. 
Yeah, kind of piggyback off what you said, you know, physical game all the way to the end, but in that second half, Lady Texas kind of took over, took took that intensity back into their hands and just, you know, wheeled their say, themselves back into the ball game and never let up from then going into overtime. But let's hear how Coach Stowe and a few players felt about their performance today after pulling out the 70 to 63 win. It's definitely a sweet feeling, uh, and it's definitely nice to do it on our home court too. That loss there definitely left um, a bad taste in our mouth, and so here it was nice to finally get back and um, be at home and persevere through kind of the stuff that we've gone through. And so um, I definitely felt like this was a collective team win, and I'm really proud of this group and I'm proud of these girls. And um, yeah, we're just going to keep on keeping on and playing together. We needed to just be poised and patient. And I said, hey, you know, if you're not knocking down shots, because we hit our first three baskets, I think were threes, um, and Sal got us off to a good start. But when you're not making shots, you've got to find other ways to score, get to the free throw line, be aggressive. They're a very aggressive defensive team. We needed to run and push and transition. And I thought how we how we got stops in the third quarter that led to some transition. And so they couldn't set their defense and play, um, you know, physical. And I, they, they do a really good job of taking you out of what you want to do, getting you off of your spots and, and really kind of trying to dictate. And we tried to use that against them in the second half of just attacking their pressure with pressure of getting to the paint, whether it was off the pass or the dribble, so we could get to the free throw line. All right, switching gears just a little bit. Let's go across town to check in on the ULM Lady Warhawks, who also had senior day today against a tough matchup, the number one team in the Sun Belt Conference against the Marshall Thundering Herd. Now, it was a bittersweet moment for the ladies before the game with the team celebrating a talented senior class that helped ULM to their most successful season in a very long time thanks to transfers like Lauren Gross and Sanaya Wells and, of course, Nunu Bradford along with first-year head coach Missy Bilderbeck. But as soon as the game started, it was all business as usual. The Warhawks came out with some juice, catching fire and holding strong to their defensive mentality by frustrating the Herd's offense and getting out to a 16-point lead. In the second quarter, the Herd would find a way to eat away at that deficit and start charging the paint on offense and getting the Warhawks in foul trouble and forcing turnovers to take the lead. But ULM went into the half up by two thanks to a Caitlin Manuel buzzer beater. But after the break, the herd kind of took control going up by 11 in the third quarter and would never let up from that moment in the fourth quarter and eventually take the 99-90 to 90 win. All right, Ayana, it was your first official college game today. So how did it feel to kind of be out here in this atmosphere at the Talmadge Assembly Center? Yeah, it felt amazing. It feels just great to be back in a college basketball setting. I miss it very much, and I'm just excited to see more basketball games. All right, y'all, that's going to wrap us up and wrap up our time here in the Thomas Assembly Center in Ruston. For reporting here in Ruston, Jerry Bryant, Ayanna Bronner. Taking one final look at the seven day forecast, Sunday, Monday, continuing of the sunshine and that warm weather. It's going to continue into Tuesday, but you might feel a little bit breezy. And then the return of daytime clouds as we get into Tuesday, and that's going to continue as we get into Wednesday, Thursday. Cold front's going to pass through on Wednesday, and that's going to bring some thunderstorms and some scattered showers. And then those are going to linger as we get into Thursday. Friday, you might see some spotty showers, more clouds. Temps are going to rebound as we get into Saturday. That's it for us. We'll see you Sunday evening at 5 p.m. You can stay up to date at myreclamist.com. Have a good night.